Welcome. In this video, we will be going over each of the individual settings and menu options on the personnel management kiosk. We're picking up right where we left off in the quick start guide. If you haven't done so already, we recommend going back and watching that video first. Diving right in, we're going to press the middle mouse button to open the password prompt. Here we have application settings, face data entry, application information, pass record, and face database. There's quite a bit of information under application settings, so we'll circle back to it a bit later on in the video. Next on the list is Face Data Entry. This has already been covered in the Quick Start Guide. Going over it briefly, this is where users can be added to the Face Database. After Face Data Entry is Application Information. Here you can find some useful information about your device, such as the system firmware version, camera information, and the MAC address. Next is the Pass Record. This is where you can view the check-in history of the kiosk. You'll be able to see the registered users that have checked in, as well as the time and their temperature upon check-in. You can also set a search parameter for desired dates and times, and then export this list to a connected USB storage device. Unregistered users or strangers will not be saved in the pass record unless the default changes are saved. This setting will be in the application settings, which we will get to shortly. The last item on the list is the face database. This is where you can view all of the registered users along with their name and picture. You can also remove registered users in this menu. From the submenu, we will now be going into the application settings. Please note that while we will be covering the application settings, we will not be giving specific settings that should be applied. From the submenu, we will now be going into the application settings. Running down the list at the top, we have the device name setting. By default, the device name will be the MAC address. This can be renamed to your desired identifier, such as check in one or west entrance. Beneath the device name is the company name. This will display on the main screen at the bottom along with the MAC and IP address. Click save to apply the settings. Next is body temperature settings. There are several options here that you can change. The first setting is body temperature test. Turning this off will disable the temperature reading upon checking in. The compensation temperature is an offset that can be applied to the temperature reading to adjust for surrounding conditions. You can select plus or minus to make adjustments as needed. We recommend using another thermometer to accurately adjust the compensation setting. The next item is the alarm threshold. At this time, this setting can only be set in Celsius. The default setting is 37.3 degrees, which is approximately 99.1 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the temperature that will trigger the alarm to activate if a user checks in whose temperature exceeds this threshold. For the body temperature alarm, changing this setting to off will disable the alarm. This makes it so that the alarm does not go off when their temperature exceeds the threshold. Leaving the setting on will keep the alarm enabled. Temperature display allows the displayed temperature upon check-in to be in the Celsius or Fahrenheit. There is a fan located at the top of the device on the rear of the head unit. Changing the fan setting to on will turn on this fan. This will provide cooling to the unit which may be needed in environments that have limited access to climate control. The mask detection setting will enable the application to deny users access if they're not wearing a mask, even if they have a temperature that does not exceed the temperature threshold. While the alarm will not sound, the unit will flash red and politely ask the user to wear a mask. At the bottom of the list, we have a stranger mode and stranger record. Turning stranger mode to on will allow strangers to be granted access. Leaving this setting on off will deny them access even when all other criteria for entry are met. Enabling stranger record will record the check-in time, temperature, and picture taken of the stranger upon check-in. 
Their information will be saved under Pass Record, which was discussed earlier in the video. Once the desired settings are changed, click on the Save to apply the changes. If you wish to change something later, you can always go back and make the appropriate adjustments. Next, we have the Identification Parameter Settings. The options listed will be the Test Threshold, Identification Times, and Living Body. The Test Threshold is used when checking pictures into the FACE database. The higher the value, the lower the picture requirements are needed. Identification times determine the number of attempts to identify whether the person is a registered user. The last setting, living body, can be set to on to enable biometric detection when identifying personnel. Going to volume setting in the application settings menu will bring up a volume slider. Moving the slider down will lower the volume of both the alarm and voice feedback. Moving the slider up will raise the volume of these settings. After the volume setting is the startup settings. We've already covered this in the quick start guide, but as a refresher, you can turn all settings to off to disable the application from automatically booting. In the application information settings menu is where we can choose to hide or show the blue information bar on the bottom of the main screen. Setting this to hide will no longer display the information bar. Inside the Recognition Effect Display menu, there are three options. Recognition Success, Recognition Failure, and Photo Flood Lamp. Changing Recognition Success to Display Name will no longer show the registered user their picture upon check-in. Changing the recognition failure option to turn off the red light will not display a red light when a user fails to check in, whether they have a temperature that exceeds the threshold or if they are a stranger. Lastly is the photo flood lamp, which refers to the type of light connected to the device. This value will be tricolored light. However, if it were to be changed to monochromatic lamp, then the green and red light will no longer be displayed, disabling the visual cue of a successful or failed check-in. The next setting is Password Setting. This is where you're able to change the password. We've already covered the password settings in the Quick Start Guide, as well as how to change the default password. Moving on, we're now going to cover the Camera Resolution Preview Settings. Changing this resolution will change the camera resolution on the home screen. Changing this option to 640 by 480 with the application information hidden will display a gray rectangle at the bottom of the screen, while the 1280 by 720 resolution covers the whole screen. In the lock screen brightness setting, we can tell the application how dim or bright to make the screensaver after the unit times out from inactivity. Raising the contrast setting will make the application brighter, while lowering it will decrease the brightness. Next is the Restart Time setting. By default, the unit is set to automatically restart at 3 a.m. Simply enter the new time in 24-hour format to set a new restart time. If you wish to disable the unit from restarting, you can simply select the Do Not Restart option in this menu. Going to the relay settings, there will be three different modes that you can choose from using the radio buttons. Below these options is the relay delay setting. Using the relay functionality, the unit can be used in conjunction with doors, locks, lights, and other devices. Moving on to others. This is where we're able to manually upgrade the application firmware. It also contains the fields needed to set up the device to communicate with our M0 managed solution, where we can see reports and kiosk metrics. This setting may vary from unit to unit based on whether or not there is a current software subscription with Meridian. Otherwise, this option will be pre-configured before the unit leaves our facility. And lastly, we have application initialization. This setting should be operated by a Meridian employee or technician. Clicking on this setting will give you the option to reinitialize the application. Doing so will delete all user data, 
including the face database, and reset all settings back to their default value. This concludes the in-depth guide for the personnel management kiosk. If you have any other questions or wish to get more information, please visit www.meridiankiosks.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.